Hello, this is Jenny La, the person behind Crafty Crochet Castle. And in this video, I'm going to show you the pattern to crochet, the hyacinth bulb. Inspiration behind this project is my pink hyacinth plant. This pattern is an intermediate pattern and it's a beginner friendly tutorial. I hope you would crochet this along with me. Crochet hyacinth bulb measures approximately 11 inches from the tip of the root to the tip of the flower. This entire plant is made using worsted weight yarn and the roots alone are of size 10 cotton thread. If you crochet with a smaller size yarn, the project will turn out much smaller. Make sure to choose your hook size accordingly. So this plant has a little bulb. You can choose to have a smiling face on your bulb or you can simply crochet it without the smiling face. The plant would look like this if you crochet without the face. And at the bottom, I have attached the roots. Here we have the leaves and the stem has pink hyacinth flowers. To crochet the hyacinth bulb, I'm using worsted weight yarn in three colors. Brown for bulb, pink for flowers, green for stem and leaves and a size 10 cotton thread in off-white. This is for the roots. I'm also using a black yarn and needle for the eyes. You can also use safety eyes here or you can skip that completely. For the crochet hook, I'm using three different sizes of hook. 2.75 mm for the flowers, 3.75 mm for the leaves and 5 mm for the bulb and the stem. We would also need a stitch marker, scissors, yarn needle and some polyfill stuffing. The details are in the description box below. If you would like to display your crochet hyacinth bulb, you would also need a waist. So I purchased this waist in my local Dollar Tree. You can find a similar waist to display your crochet plant. Now let us crochet the bulb and the stem. The bulb will be crocheting in brown so I'm taking a brown yarn here and a 5mm crochet hook. So first I'm gonna start off with a magic circle. If you find it hard to do a magic circle you can always do chain 2 and work your round 1 in the second chain from the hook. So now I'll show you how to do a magic circle. To do a magic circle I'm gonna take my yarn like this and I'm going to wrap it around my two fingers. I'm gonna cross it at the point where both the yarn meets. Next I'm gonna pinch it here, take the yarn out. So there you have a little loop over here. I'm going to insert my hook inside the loop, yarn over and bring up a loop. So next I'm going to carefully take out my fingers and pinch it over here so everything stays in place. So next I'm going to yarn over and pull through the loop. So there we have made a magic circle. This ring is adjustable and we'll be working around one stitches in here. So to do round one, I will do six single crochet inside the ring. To do a single crochet, I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and bring a loop. I'll have two stitches on the hook. I'll yarn over and pull through both the loops at once. This stitch is called as the single crochet. Now I'll do five more single crochet in here. For the pattern of the bulb and the stem, we'll be working in rounds and I'm not going to join at the end of each round unless I mention it. So once when you complete all six single crochet, you can pull the tail to close the opening. So now see how the opening is big. Once when you pull it tight, you can close it off. So there you have completed round one. Round one has a total of six stitches. Now let's work on round two. So before you move on to round two, if you would like to mark the end of each round with a stitch marker, you can do so. You can use a piece of string or a different color yarn as well to mark the end of each round. So now let's work on round two. For round two, I will do two single crochet in my next stitch. So this is my next stitch. I'll be doing two single crochet in the same stitch. And in the next stitch, I will be doing one single crochet. So I'll be repeating this pattern two more times till we reach the end of our round over here. That is the stitch with a stitch marker. So I will do two single crochet in my next stitch. Followed by one single crochet in the next stitch. I'll repeat this one more time. And when you're working on the stitch, make sure to take your stitch marker out complete that round and move your stitch marker. 
So this is the last stitch of round 2. So now let's work on round 3. For round 3 I will do 2 single crochet in my next stitch. So I did 2 single crochet in stitch. Now I will do 1 single crochet in the next 2 stitches. So this is going to be the repeat pattern for the round. The repeat pattern is 2 single crochet in my next stitch followed by 1 single crochet in the next 2 stitches. This round will have a total of 12 stitches. Now let's work on round 4. For round 4 I will do 2 single crochet in my next stitch followed by 1 single crochet in the next 3 stitches. Here's 1, 2 and 3. So this is the pattern for this round. I will repeat this pattern 2 more times and this round will have a total of 15 single crochet. For round 5, I will do 2 single crochet in my next stitch, followed by 1 single crochet in the next 4 stitches. So here's 1, 2, 3 and 4. So I'll be repeating this pattern for all the stitches in this round and this round will have a total of 18 single crochet. So if you notice, our bulb is gradually increasing in size. So this is the bottom of our bulb and we are going upwards. So now let's work on round 6. For round 6, I'll do 2 single crochet in my next stitch. Followed by 1 single crochet in the next 5 stitches. So I'll repeat this pattern two more times till we reach the end of a stitch marker over here and this round will have a total of 21 stitches. I'll meet you after I complete the repeat pattern for this round. So this is how our bulb looks at the end of round 6. Now let's work on the next three rounds that is round 7, 8 and 9. For the three rounds I'll be following the same pattern. The pattern is one single crochet in every stitch around so you have to just crochet one single crochet in all the stitches for the next three rounds so at the end of each round you mark the stitch marker to the next round and meet me after you complete three rounds so this is how our project will look at the end of round nine now let's work on round 10. For round 10, we will begin decreasing our project over here. That is, we'll be reducing the shape of this bulb. So first, I'm going to start off with a single crochet decrease, a single crochet two together. To do a single crochet two together, I'm going to insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over and bring a loop. So instead of finishing this single crochet, I'm going to insert my hook inside the next stitch, yarn over and bring up a loop. So now I'll have three loops on the hook. We would have worked up on two stitches at the bottom so now I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops at once so this stitch is called as the single crochet decrease or single crochet two together because we are taking up two stitches at the bottom and finishing it as one stitch so now in the next five stitches I'll be doing one single crochet each
this will be the repeat pattern for the round the repeat pattern is a single crochet decrease followed by a single crochet in the next five stitches this round 10 will have a total of 18 stitches i'll meet you after i complete the repeat pattern two more times for this round for round 11 i will do a single crochet decrease next followed by a single crochet in the next stitch so this is going to be the repeat pattern for the round the repeat pattern is a single crochet two together followed by a single crochet so this round will have a total of 12 stitches Now at this point you can put a pause to the project and embroider eyes and mouth if you would prefer that or else you can simply stuff this up and move on to the next round. So to attach eyes I am using an embroidery thread and needle over here. You can also use safety eyes. I will be attaching eyes roughly around this round over here that is 7th round. And I'm going to embroider the mouth below that. The next step is to stuff this up with some polyfill stuffing. Now let's work on the next round which is round 12. In this round I will do a single crochet decrease for a total of 6 times. This round will have a total of 6 stitches. So I am at my last single crochet two together over here. So I am going to do the stitch but instead of finishing the stitch in the brown yarn I am going to change my color to green over here. To change the color I am simply going to bring the yarn over here and I am going to yarn over and pull through all three stitches to complete the stitch. So this is how I am going to be changing my color. To change the color I will start the stitch in like I would normally do but finish it up with a different color. You can use any method that you would prefer to change the color. N then you can trim off the brown yarn and continue working on the next round. So now we will be continuing working with the stem over here. To do the stem which is round 13, I will be working only in the back loops only. Normally when we are working a stitch, we will insert inside the stitch like this. So we have a little V shape over here. This loop is called as the front loop and this loop is called as the back loop. But for this round, I am going to use only the back loops. So I will do one single crochet in every stitch around. This round will have a total of 6 stitches. So here we have completed 
round 13. This entire round is worked in the back loop only. By doing so, we have a beautiful ridge that separates the root from the stem. At this point, if you would like, you can go ahead and stuff your root more and add a little shape to it. And then you can continue working on the stem. So the next 17 rounds, that is around 14 to round 30, will be following the same pattern. The pattern is one single crochet in every stitch around. Each round will have a total of six single crochet. So now because each round is a little tiny and it would be hard for you to use the stitch marker to go up ahead on each round, I would recommend you to crochet a total of 102 single crochet worked in the rounds that would go round and round all the way up here. And then you can meet me after you complete a 102 single crochet stitches. Or if you would prefer to count the rounds, you can go ahead and complete the next round, which is round 14, then 15, 16, till round 30. So the rounds are very simple. One single crochet in every stitch around. So I'll show you one round and then we're going to follow the same repeat pattern. So I crocheted six single crochet here. Here I've added one round. So make sure to crochet like that. And also make sure to stuff as you go. I know this is a very tiny opening over here, but stuff as you go little by little so that we don't find it hard to stuff on it later. I'll meet you after I complete round 30. So this is how our bulb and stem would look at the end of round 30. So here I have completed 30 rounds and if you see I have stuffed the stem up. Make sure to stuff it pretty firm because we want this to retain the shape. Do not worry if you see a stuffing through these. We'll be attaching flowers on top of these so these will be completely hidden. But make sure you stuff it nice and firm so that it retains its shape. So at the end of round 30. I'm going to join with a slip stitch in my next stitch. To do a slip stitch, I'm going to insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over and bring up a loop. So next I'll bring this loop through the loop on the hook. So this stitch is called as the slip stitch. Now I'm going to finish off over here leaving a long tail. To finish it off, I'm going to trim the yarn over here. Next I'm going to yarn over and pull through the loop on the hook all the way through and tighten this up. Now let's see how to close this opening. To close the opening, I'm going to thread the tail in a yarn needle. Next, I'm going to run the needle across the front loops of all the stitches remaining in the last round. So here we are just using the front loops. So once when you've covered all the stitches like this, look at this, pull tight, the opening will close. So now you can secure this with a knot if you would prefer. And we can weave the tail in. To weave in, you just have to insert the needle through the stitch next to a stitch and pull it out in a random spot like this. Make sure you do not pull it too tight because we want our project to retain its shape. Now we can trim it off over here. There we have completed the bulb and the stem. Now let us crochet the small leaf. So I'm taking my green yarn and 3.75 mm crochet hook. So I'll start off with a slip knot followed by chain 11. So once when you have your 11 chains, on the second chain from the hook, this is the first chain and this is the second chain from the hook, I will do a single crochet and I will do a single crochet in the next 8 chains. Now we have the last chain remaining over here. In this chain, I will do a half double crochet. To do a half double crochet, I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook in this chain, 
yarn over and bring up a loop so now we'll have three loops on the hook i'll yarn over and pull through all three loops at once so this stitch is called as the half double crochet and there we have completed a small leaf at this point you can finish off over here leaving a long tail we'll be using this tail to sew the leaf onto the stem so make sure it is long enough so make sure to crochet a total of six such small leaves now let us crochet the big leaf for the big leaf i'm using the same green yarn and a 3.75 mm crochet hook so here i'm gonna start off with a slip knot followed by chain 13. So once you have 13 chains like this, do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And a single crochet in the next 10 chains. So now we have the last chain over here. In this chain, I will do a half double crochet and finish it off. So this is the big leaf. Make sure to crochet five more big leaves so that we have a total of six leaves. Now let us crochet the flower. So I'm taking my pink yarn here and 2.75 mm crochet hook. So first let's start off with a magic circle. Followed by five single crochet inside the ring. This is my round one for the flower. For the pattern of the flower also we'll be working in rounds. For round 2, I will be working 1 single crochet in every stitch around. This round will also have a total of 5 single crochet. After completing round 2, make sure that the right side is outside. And I'm going to end round 2 by joining with a slip stitch in my next stitch. So this is how our flower will look after round 2. Now we'll be working on round 3. In this round, we'll be forming the petals for our flower. So I will do chain 3 here. And on the second chain from the hook, I will do a slip stitch. And I will do a single crochet in the next chain over here. So now we would have completed working on the three chains over here. So now we'll be back to our round two and in the next stitch of round two, I will do a slip stitch. So there we formed one petal. I'm going to repeat this four more times so that we have a total of five petals. So the pattern is chain three, a slip stitch in the second chain from the hook, followed by a single crochet in the next chain. Now I'm going to do a slip stitch in the next stitch over here. So there we have two petals. I'm going to repeat this three more times.
I'm going to finish off leaving a long tail. Now we can bring all the yarn to the wrong side over here or to the bottom of the flower. So there we have completed one flower. Make sure to crochet 15 more flowers. We can weave the tails in later. We'll be using these tails to attach the flower onto our stem. So now let us see how to assemble them. So I have our flowers over here, big leaves, small leaves, and our bulb with stem. So first let us assemble from the top to the bottom. So we'll be attaching our flowers. So I'm gonna take my flower, thread one of its tail in a yarn needle, position the flower on the top, and I will sew it up. So before that, make sure to bring your yarn through the center of our flower like this, and make sure the flower retains its shape like this. So we can position it up and attach by sewing it. To weave in the tail, I'm going to use the same method. I'm going to insert my needle through the stitch and pull it out in a random spot. And we can trim it off over here. Same way, weave in the other tail and in the same manner, attach all the flowers to a stem. After attaching the flowers, our bulb looks like this. Here I have attached 16 flowers. The next step is to attach the leaves. So first, I'll be attaching the small leaves. So take the leaf, thread its long tail in a yarn needle and make sure the right side is facing outside. This is the wrong side and this side is the right side and place it around over here, maybe around round three of the stem, which is roughly about round 15 and then you can sew it up in place. In the same manner, place all the small leaves around this round 15 and sew it in place. It's okay if even if the leaves overlap, this assembly involves a lot of stitching and a lot of sewing it. So if you do not like to sew it up, you can also use a hot glue to attach it in place, but make sure to weave in all the tails before you do so. So here I'm gonna weave it in and then we can trim the tail over here. In the same manner, attach the small leaves around over here. The next step is to attach the big leaves around round 14. So I'm going to thread the long tail in a yarn needle. Make sure the right side, that is this side, is facing outside. Position it around the round and sew it in place. I will repeat this for all the other five leaves and I'll meet you after I complete this assembly. Here I have completed the assembly of the flowers and our leaves. The last step is to attach root at the bottom of our bulb over here. So I'm taking an off white thread over here. This is size 10 cotton thread and I have six strands here. Each strand measures roughly about seven to eight inches. I'm taking uneven lengths here. So first, let us see how to attach them. So I'll be attaching one strand at a time. So let's fold the strand in half. I'm taking the 2.75 mm crochet hook and at the bottom of our bulb, I'm going to attach it. So first, I'm going to insert my hook into one of the stitches. I'm going to pull through this folded half through it. Next, I'm going to yarn over the loose ends and pull through this. And I'm going to tighten this up. This forms a knot over here. And there we have attached one root. So I'm going to make sure all the roots are attached in different parts. And each one having a different length. So here's the, my next one. I'm going to fold it in half. This time I'm going to choose a different place. I'll meet you after I attach all the roots. There I have completed my crochet hyacinth bulb decor. 
So all you have to do is take a waist. I found this in my local Dollar Tree and I'm going to put it in here. The bulb stays up and then you can enjoy your crocheted plant. I hope you crochet this along with me. Please show your support by subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching.